quarters, second to none at Randwick. And timing with him has been very, very good from uh, Michael and John Hawks. They've, they've really timed him in well, haven't they? He wasn't quite ready for his first, but he's built through the preparation. And a big thing with these older horses, obviously, um, they're, they're slow to getting their, their, their match fitness, just like it would be in any sporting event. So third up from his spell, he's, he's ready to fight. Vega Magic, six-week break for him, comes back from the Mims. He's unbeaten for David Hayes, three for three. Well, what more can you say about the Hayes, Hayes and Davenick team? They're, they're just doing everything in front of them at the moment. And, and obviously a race that they've picked out from a long way out. He's got the track record with the Group 1 next to his name. And um, he'll run a strong 1,200. Difficult to line up the Victorian sprinting form with the New South Wales sprinting form. And everyone's got an opinion on which is the stronger. Where do you sit with that? Well, New South Wales for sure. Just <laughs> like any patriotic um, New South Welshman. And obviously that's another part of this race. It's bringing yeah. states together. We've got Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria and other and other, other w connections with West Australian horses, South Australian. And you talk about this horse has done it all, WASA and also Victoria. Um, Red Searle, well, he's been a massive improver. He's got a big winning run going, hasn't he? Yeah, well, what we see with horses is they can be late maturers, and this horse certainly fits into that category. And um, what more can you say? Peter and Paul Snowden doing a great job with Kieran McAvoy aboard. He's, he's had a sit on a few of them and, um, and I guess gone with this horse. If you were the trainer, would you be asking him to lead today? That's his natural thing, or would you rather Hootson leads him? I would be saying keep your horse in the comfort zone. If you try and take a horse out of its comfort zone, you'll, you'll come undone because there's so many good horses ready to strike. I think it's more about keeping the horse happy and comfortable. Red Kirk Warrior, he won the new market first up. It hadn't been done before. He won the Bobby Lewis brilliantly. We didn't see him at his best on heavy tracks in the order. How do you rate him? Obviously devastating down the straight at, at Flemington. Today he's racing right-handed. Um, that could come against him. Um, it, it, horses can't do anything wrong in these types of races, but there's no doubting his class. Do you worry about a young jockey on him that's had Group 1 success already? I do, but once they start winning the races, they, their career change, changes quickly and confidence is a great thing, and this boy has confidence. Do you get a say in in your horse's plans in deploy? Um, we could have. I chose to stay out. I think there's an old part coming saying one man can train 100 horses, two people can't train one. <laughs> so that's clever advice from the best. Clearly innocent. Now he came through the country races. We know Chris Lees has now got him. He's a group one winner out of Queensland. Yeah, he was a horse on our target and he was a, he was a find of the winter. Um, whether he can match it against these horses on the better tracks is yet to be determined, but he's got his chance. And Huey Bowman, who you know better than anybody rides him and he's pretty confident of He's the best man for these occasions. He is Mr. Cool and you see that with Winks every time she races. It's a big part in these big events. And here's the horse that Chris has bought the slot for and decided on September the 22nd this would be his horse deployed. Yeah, well, track record holder, um, I think, twice at his last two starts. So what more can you say? Non group one winner, but that could change soon. Do you see a lot of pressure up front in this race? Because we assume that the boy will be up there battling it out up the front. Yeah, the boy's got natural speed. I think the two two year old fillies will hold their positions from their good gates. You've got Vega Magic drawn out wide. He'll have to come across. The horses in the middle will have to hold their spot so they don't get pushed out the back. That's going to create a lot of time. Well, the last two TJ Smiths has been the first three both times. Fell Swoot's been second and third in those. We don't feel he's going quite as well. What do you think? I think it's a fair call, but the beauty of training horses is they've tried something different. They've taken them down to the beach. They've changed his environment. On his day, he's a very good horse. That's simple enough to trick a horse back into performing at their best. And, and when you've got a horse like him at his best, he can perform. This was probably uh, a strategic move by the ATC to bring the Japanese horse into the race, Brave Smash. But look, he just may raise to another level. Yeah, we're all aware of the, the Japanese connections and the, how good their horses are and the international taste it brings to this race. So I think he needs to improve but a strong 1,200. He could surprise. Jamie Spencer hasn't been riding here. He's been riding overseas. Do you see that as a problem for a, a jockey arriving on the day? He's had a few races today. He rode one for us early. He was posted three wide with no cover. He was the first one to say, I, I didn't ride the horse well. So he's aware of these. He's an international jockey. Just like any international sports person, they adapt very quickly. English has got a bit of attitude. She's gone over to the barrier. We know her TJ Smith form and her golden slipper form. Only brought down by the great Chautauqua and the TJ. She's a great horse, great trainers, so she'll be cheery right for today's assignment.
And Gay, of course, is at Caulfield. You were in Melbourne today, but you've come back. And she will reign. So how does a Golden Slipper winner within six months go in the Everest? We're about to find out. Yeah, well, they get a weight allowance for being a three-year-old filly. That's a big plus. Plus, she's been to this stage before. She's performed so well. Her lead-up run was brilliant. And with 51 kilos, barrier two, she's got a lot in her favour. You think she's got to hold her position in the first half dozen? I, it would be it would be favourable with that light weight. Um, and she'll make it hard for the others to catch her. With that weight, it must be respected. Well, she's got a sensational record. We know that. Only the one defeat when Frolic came down the outside. But this was the filly that was actually favourite of the Golden Slipper. We sort of forget that, don't we, Hickson? Yeah, we do. We, we, we're obviously seeing a horse, how they go against the Group 1s in the big races. Uh, there was legitimate excuses for her that day, and it was a very wet track. And she's proven herself this preparation with a good win. And what a story, Jeff Loy. In oh, his 50s. 56. 56, and, he, and he'd ha he's had a stroke, and they told him he'd never ride again. And here he is in the biggest turf race in the world on a live chance that is a brilliant effort. It's a massive effort. And Coolmore strategically have gone with a filly that, that you know, with the right side Piero and also obviously with their colours. But look, she likes a pressure race, Tulip. Yeah, she does. And again, a filly with the lightweight. So um, the Hayes team, they wouldn't have bought her if they didn't think she was the here to be respected. And as you said, you've got to respect those colours. Chris, thanks so much for giving us your time. And we can't wait to see Winks in a fortnight. We'll be talking to you <laughs> between now and then. Richard, you're going to go down as well. Yes. I know you're going to be talking to the lucky trainer afterwards. James Jordan, your assessment, James, of the Everest. When I look at this race, Bruce, I see a lot of speed. Hootson will kick up from gate one. Red Zell's another horse that will go really fast. So I want to pick a horse that's got a proven ability to chase a group one tempo and still finish off. One of those horses is She Will Reign. We saw her do it as a two-year-old in the Rose in their Golden Slipper. We saw her do it last week in the Moya. She's got 51 kilos. I'm pretty confident she'll be strong late. And she's the way I'd go in a pretty tough race. Well, James, she's still in the market and she's actually our second worst result. Uh, she's still there at six dollars but it looks like a market that punters decided by this morning who they were going to back there hasn't been a lot of change in the afternoon vega magic still favorite at 440 she will reign i've talked about our worst result and best back runner is the mighty shataka at 650 red zell 850 english got down to as low as nine but it's back out to 10 of the others red kirk warrior holding its price okay at 11 uh, and also clearly innocent has supporters got down to 10 but back to 13 deploy 11 to 15 and brave smash a watch here for us has come into 17 after one stage being $31. Vega Magic, the favourite for the Everest. Looking forward to hearing who the market mover might be. So, the richest race on turf. Well, we're nearly there, aren't we? Can he do it again? We're about to find out. Bang today with the running of the $10 million, the Everest today. It's a fantastic crowd, over 33,000 people in attendance, and that trophy, the Chiron Trophy, worth $320,000 with more than 5,000 jewels associated with it. So there's the top eight in the betting. It's a fabulous betting race. Chautauqua, She Will Reign, Vega Magic. Red Kirk Warrior, Red Zerl, all strongly fancied, along with English. Let's go to Crown Bet for a moment. To you, Matt, who is the all-important market mover for the Everest? It's She Will Reign number 10, Bruce. I mean, the others have gone out. Chautauqua has gone out to $7. Uh, Vega Magic out to four sixty. dollars That's $6 She Will Reign. That's about to go into $5.50. So the late money says She Will Reign is your market mover. OK, so She Will Reign, the golden slipper winner is the market mover for the Everest. So she's already won the richest two-year-old race in the world. Can she win the richest race on turf? She's the $20,000 buy with a, an amazing group of owners, uh, a lot of them in their very first horse, at, uh, an electric group and a group that will go off if she is successful. But what about Chautauqua? He's the, the king of the Ramwick 1200. He's won the TJ Smith on three consecutive occasions. And that, in many ways, is the mirror image of this race. It's the same conditions, wait for age, 1200 metres at this track. And on each occasion, he's come from a seemingly hopeless position. Have a look at the crowd. We haven't seen this in a spring in Sydney this century. It's phenomenal. It's been a brilliant build-up. The day has turned out to be a fine one. It's cool, but it's just right. We've had some spectacular racing, and uh, it's just been the perfect build 
to what is an historic day in Australian racing, a $10 million race, a new race, a race that obviously is going to be around forever. We just had Chris Waller here. He, along with the Winx owners, invested $1.8 million to buy a barrier in this race over three years, and he's almost as excited as he would be if he were training. So let's join Darren Flindell for his call on the very first, the Everest, the $10 million sprint at Royal Rand. Down to the last couple. The excitement really starting to build. Clearly Innocent goes forward. Hugh Bowman in the saddle. And English drawn the outside gate for Blake Shin. Vega Magic, the favourite. Here we go for the Everest. The light's on. Second last and Gretzel jumped fast. So did Hoots on the inside and they lock on to the early part. Fell swoop quickly in a stride, goes to third, then deploy Red Coat Warrior and Shibble Reigns mustering along the fence. Williams is snagging back, Vega Magic looking for cover. Then clearly Innocent further back to Bray, smash two off to Jolim. Three lengths to English, a length off to Tarqua last. Hoots and held out Gretzel for the lead of the 600. Fell swoop without cover in third. She will rain poking through on the fence, followed by Red Kirk Warrior to play deeper out. Then came Brave Smash, Vega Magic on cover around the turn. Clearly innocent, making hard work of it. English Chautauqua still back past up the rise. Hoots in the red zone. Hoots in the inside of Red Zone. Red Zone puts his head in front now. Then came to play Red Kirk Warrior. Brave Smash is ducking and weaving. Chautauqua sinks up the And she will reign and fell swoop was last in. So Kerry McAvoy wins the Melbourne Cup last year. That was his second Melbourne Cup. And now he wins a race that's even richer. He's got Red Cell home. He was on the pace outside Hoots and all the way. And for Peter and Paul Stone, the father and son combination. Oh, what a result. And what a result also for the slot holder, James Harron. I mean, he went in early, pretty early with this horse. The syndicate, there's 17 different owners. We saw their story earlier today. This is just a fantastic result for a horse who's unbeaten in the spring he's had a big winning streak Vega Magic was a colossal run second huge run by Brave Smash and Chittak was flashed home to run third but it's uh, three two eight and four after the ten million dollar the Everest today so Red Zerl sensational run from the front Snitzel again the sire and Karen McAvoy the jockey for the Snowdens and the owners are going to be over the moon. Let's go to Bernadette Cooper. I think Bernie's about to talk to Karen McAvoy. In just a moment we'll get Bernie but here's Red Zill getting the better of Hoots and look at Chautauqua on the inside starting to work his way through. Vega Magic looked a little unlucky. Here's Bernie with Karen McAvoy. Of history making here today, little Red Zell, who would have thought? Ah, uh, he's a little star, isn't he? Um, so privileged to be riding these horses for Peter and Paul Snowden, um, master horseman, and job well under them. So patient with this fella, early in his career, and are paying, it's paying the dividends now. And what a race to rim, Bernie is. <laughs> so, so exciting, um, so exciting to be a part of it, and. Uh, yeah, it was, it was such a such a huge buzz. And are all your family were obviously here today to watch? Uh, yeah, my wife's here. The kids are hopefully yelling at the screen at home. Um, but yeah, it's just just a, a huge buzz. It's um, you know this horse had drawn a good gate. There was so many scenarios going through our heads as to how it was going to work out, but it couldn't have worked out any better in the run. We just had a dream run outside the leader and. Yeah, I'm, I'm over the moon. I mean, you had faith in this horse the whole way along. I mean, you rode She Will Reign to, uh, to win in uh, Victoria, but you always had good faith in this guy. Exactly, and as I said, the Snowdens uh, had a plan with him to give him a month between runs, and, and they had him spot on, and um, full credit to them. Um, the horses performed unbelievably today, so... Um, woo! 
<laughs> Pretty excited. Triple Crown are really going to have something to show off about now. Be a big party now tonight, won't they, Bernie? <laughs> How about James Harrod? Yeah, exactly. Well done to James, obviously putting faith in in the team, and um, to Chris and Michael. Um, obviously, they're great guys to ride for, and uh, you know, let the Snowdens do their job. And um, big team of owners, and uh, great to have James Harrod, who's part of the Snowden stable, on board as well. So. Just like to thank Race New South Wales and, and the board for putting on such a big day. And as you can see from the crowd, it's, it's in its infancy, but it's already a huge success and uh, thrilled to win the first one. Well done. Go on, yeah. Thanks, man. Amazing scenes, are they? This is unofficial. He may have broken the track record. We're going to double, double check that, obviously. But with the slot holders and all these owners and the trainers and the and the connections and the breeders, there are just so many winners. Red Cell hanging on down to you, Richard. You're right amongst it. Paul Snowden, you've just won the richest race in the world on turf. That's incredible. I can't talk, Rich. Um, I haven't even seen the old man yet. I don't even know where he is, but um, it's just um, a massive thing for the stable and just so, so relieved. You've worked so hard with this horse. You've got him to where he is today. You must be absolutely over the moon with how hard he fought in the straight. Uh, look. I could stand here in front of you all week and say black and blue how good he was going and all this plays in our hands. We've done it. This is the third time we've done it now and this was his best to come and everyone thought, sort of wrote him off those first two runs back and thought, oh, a month between, he's a bit of a risk, but it was definitely not the case. You and your dad, you're such a formidable combination. It must be absolutely fantastic to be able to share this with him and I think he's coming here now if we'll get him over, because I think he's just as emotional as you are. Yeah, look, it's we, we've got a very special bond, me and Dad. I, I don't think anyone has what we got, so I'm um, very happy. <laughs> Come on, Peter. <laughs> Peter, don't you get out of there. Don't you get, run away. <laughs> Paul's run away. What a magnificent oh, job. Can't believe it. All comes down the horse, Richard, you know, as well as I. You can do the same to 20 others, 50 others, you won't get the same result. It's just all about the horse. This horse, he has a couple of battling owners in the ownership, and he's a real battler himself, isn't he? He's got a battling trainer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, great result. Yeah, they're a terrific bunch of guys, and uh, no, there's, there's a lot of, lot of stories behind all the owners, and there's a couple of sad ones there as well, but it's... Uh, if they feel any like me, they'll be, they'll be better ten times over. You've had golden slippers. You've had group ones all over the place. How does this feeling compare? Uh, this is the, the best by far. Like all, all our different reasons. The, the first golden slipper was exceptional. I didn't think I'd ever get that feeling again, but today, uh, I think I've all passed it. Well, congratulations. Go and enjoy it with your group of owners, your slot holders. You've done an amazing job. Thanks, Richard. do appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Great, great stuff, Richard. And you just saw Peter and Paul starting. Here's Kerry McAvoy. He's won a couple of Melbourne Cups. He's ridden for Godolphin all over the world. We know what a champion jockey. And you can just see the reaction. And the crowd have just gone off. Faker Magic was huge. And so was Chautauqua and Brave Smash. But Red Zell and the courage and speed to run from the front. We'll double check that time. Hey, Richie, I'm going to get to you in a moment. Peter Snowden has won three of the last six Caulfield Guineas. He just said this is the greatest moment in his training life. We're We've just had a, an incredible minute and a half here at Royal Randwick. Over to you for the guineas, mate.